certain level, when it comes out, boom, they get the box set delivered to their door. It's kind of, you know, that would be great. And so I actually wrote that to the director of production of Funimation. And I said, and I haven't heard back yet, but I said, hey, man, let's talk about get some more D. Gray Man out there. Because everyone wants to do it. We want to do it too. We all, like Colleen was just saying, she's like, I want to play, I want to do more Miranda stuff. And so we're looking into it. So actually, what's this week? Next week. Next week, next week is the first full week of, is that the, no, no, no. No, that's the first, no, no, no. Two weeks from now, I go in for Funimation to do more fairy tale, and I'm gonna follow up with it and I'll find out. But I think it would be really cool because it's like the, it would be the first anime series that goes to Kickstarter. And I think that a lot of people would get behind it because we just want to finish it. Now, keep in mind, it's, it's another 50 episodes, 51 episodes. That's not cheap. So as long as we keep that in mind, because I'm thinking like, I'm thinking it's like a million bucks. Like, cause, because you gotta think, 51 episodes. So here's what, here's what it breaks down. You gotta, you've gotta buy, you gotta license it from Japan. You have to get the scripts from Japan and get them localized, which means you have to translate them into English, just straight translation. No bad puns here. N none of those. Then you've got, then you've got to, then you've, wait, sorry, you've got to translate it, then you've got to localize it. So you've just translated it, then you've got to make it flow, then you've got to time code it, write it, then you've got to hire the director, hire the engineer, hire the actors, then you have to hire the producer, hire the studio space, then you have to create the box art, create the box set, print the Blu-rays and DVDs, work out distribution deals, get the website going, marketing. So it's, yeah, we've got to make it rain. Now, but what if we did this though? What if we, one of the perks was a, a digital, digital download, so then you cut out the box art, you cut out all the need for that. I wonder if that saves any. I mean, I know it would save some money, but I wonder if it would save a significant amount. I don't know. But these are the things I'm going to talk about, and we'll see. Yes? Uh, doesn't Funimation already do a lot of streaming? Yeah. They do, but the thing is, is that when you make a deal with companies, yeah. part, of, part of the reason that they're making that deal with you is, you know, they, they are letting you rent this property, but they're also making money on the sales. And so if you, to them, you, have, you can't cut out half the... You know, you can't say, well, we're just going to do digital download because then that cuts out all this physical right. media that they could be right. selling at, at cons right. and booths and people want to get it right. signed and stuff. So I don't know if they would go for that, but I don't know. Because um, the property is just sitting there. It's already done on their end. So they're just holding on to it. So I don't know if it would be something. Maybe we need a safety engineer to get a safe plan together that we could present to them. <laughs> I don't know, but um, yeah, I think yeah, we need to. We need to. Thank you, thank you. So, um, so I'll talk to him and see what happens. I don't know. I would love it. I would love to do that. And if it works, maybe we see what what else I can do. I don't know because if you look at things like, uh, you know, they're like the Veronica Mars movie or whatever raised a ton of money to make their movie. It got made. It played in theaters. People went saw, you know, went to see it and everything like that. It was very successful. Um, you know, there's a lot of projects on Kickstarter that, that, that make it rain. Like the Pebble Watch. The Pebble Watch is like, oh, we need $100,000. They got like $10 million. Yeah. I mean, it can happen. It can totally happen if people want it enough. But I just think that going to these conventions and, and, and every single time people asking about D. Gray Man, I, I wonder if, if people would. So I'll find out. I don't know. Uh, what other shows? Italia. Italia. We, season 5 is coming out in June, I think. June? Or on? It's over. It's <laughs> done. <laughs> well, actually, I do have a question regarding that. I do know that there was a brief live action or on that was made. That's Is true. there any chance of that ever being licensed over here and dubbed? No. no, no, no. no they make Superman ice cream. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> awesome. uh, I don't know. Um, oh well, I tried. The uh, so Attack on Titan. Then there's, I guess that's like the biggest. I don't know, kill a kill? Woo! All right. Woo! Free. Free? Oh, Lord. Yeah. Just been Are you doing Soul Eater or not? Soul Eater. Soul Eater not? Soul Eater, more of that would be good. More Ghost Hunt. More Ghost Hunt. Ghost Hunt. That would be good. Yeah? Can I ask you a question? Please. So, uh, 
J. Michael Tatum said that after he was recording Ghost Hunt, he thought that Funimation was haunted. Did you share the same experience? Do you think Funimation's haunted? Are you kidding? Funimation's haunted. Funimation, awesome. Funimation is not haunted. However, I have experienced ghosty things on film sets and stuff. I was, uh, when I shot the movie Scream of the Banshee in uh, Baton Rouge, so we shot at a house that was built during the Civil War, and it still had you know, slave quarters up and all that stuff. I mean, this is an old, old, old plantation house. I mean, we're shooting in there. And there, when you, when you uh, go in the house, so you, when you go up the stairs, so you go up the stairs, you know, it's one of those stairs that goes, it goes up, turn, up, turn, up, like that. So when you go up on this first landing, there's a huge old portrait of the first family that lived there. And so Lauren Holly was in, who was in this movie, she was in um, NCIS and Dumb and Dumber, she was the redheaded woman. Uh, she's in it, she, she is very mystical, see, like very superstitious. And so she's taking pictures of things that are in the house on her cell phone. And so she takes a picture of that portrait. And then she looks at her phone and she's like, you know, what is that? And in her phone, she sees on the portrait, so you've got the family, you know, family, family, you know, mom, dad, dog, blah, 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 blah. And then it's, around it is just like blackness, just shading or whatever. In the phone, there is a row of Confederate soldiers like this, like, like uh, telescoping back, so like they're kind of staggered. It's not in the, it's not in the portrait at all, and, but it's only in her phone. She tried to send the picture just to her husband and things like that. It's not in that one. Couldn't see it when she sent it. It's just in her phone. And I saw the picture, and there's no, like, I'm the first one to be like, I see the strings. I saw he did that trick. There's the quarter. Like, I'm the first one to do that. And I looked at that picture and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> there are Confederate soldiers. I mean, there's no mistaking it. There are these little mustache dudes. All the same dude in a row there. And it was pretty, it was pretty incredible. Then, so we shoot at night, because it's a horror movie, so we're shooting at night. And uh, at catering, catering is right by the slave quarters. Again, I don't know why they're still standing. I, I don't know why. I mean, I guess it's like a historical thing, but I don't get. I don't. I don't know. And so we're 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 outside and we're eating under tents and stuff like this, and it's late, and uh, I'm just eating, and I'm kind of. You know, these are long days, so I'm just kind of sitting and looking around, and then there's the cornfield and stuff, and then I look over, and in between the tree and the slave quarters, I see this shadowed, like just figure that is, it's all darkness, and I see this guy look at me, and then start running off into the cornfield, and then it was almost like they just, they just disappeared. It was just like they're running, and then they're not there anymore. And uh, I was like, did someone see? And then there was a guy that was like. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, there's a dog that lives on this property. There's a dog that is the, the family dog there. Uh, not the same dog that's in the picture, because that dog would be like a thousand years old in dog years. But um, this dog would only stay in one room of the house, and it was the only room with uh, warmth. But there's no heater or anything on. So all the other parts of the house are cold. And I went through it because, you know, when you're, when you're on a movie set, there's a lot, of, a lot of waiting around while they're setting up lights and things like that. The whole rest of the place, cold, cold, cold. In this one room, hot. Like, not hot, but warm. Like, pleasant. So the dog would only stay in there. So then eventually, everybody moved the video village. And the video village is basically, the director sets up their monitor, so they have a big TV screen and a rack where they can watch what the camera is doing from the comfort of their little video village. It's kind of where you set up your headquarters on set, and you have your communications, and you've got your, you know, stuff like that. So we set it all up in there because it was the warmest room in the place. So that was my experience with, I, I've had some other stuff, but um, the, my thing, my take on it is sometimes people tell me about ghost stuff that happens or alien stuff that happens. And again, I'm the first one to be super skeptical. But then again, I also say, you know what? I don't know everything in the world. How can I sit there and say like, you know what? I've done all my research on everything ghost, everything alien, everything vampire, everything this, and that's bullshit. I don't know. 
I don't know, because I haven't done all the research. Maybe there is something out there. I mean, you know, for the longest time, we thought the Earth was flat. And then we're like, oh no, wait, it's actually right. So who knows? I don't, I don't know. I mean, because it's also, it's like people, people believe, you know, people believe in God, and we believe in heaven, and we believe in hell, and we've never seen those things, but we believe in them out of faith. And so how does it make ghosts any different? I don't know. I'm not saying, I just don't know. Um, so I still look at it skeptically. Like there are times when I'm like, dude, that wasn't an alien. That was your grandma with an avocado mask on. <laughs> but, um, but I don't know. I've, I've heard a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. What were we in the eating contest between Alan Walker, Ling, and Natsu? Alan, because even though Natsu eats a lot, Alan eats a lot. Ling eats a lot too, but Alan like eats a lot <laughs> and orders a lot of food. Yeah. I think Goku would beat all of them. Goku? Luffy! Luffy? Yeah. I think Luffy. Vegeta would beat all of them! Um, Is that your invitation to Chris Sabbath? Yeah. <laughs> that was. Yeah, Luffy and Goku might win that. Yes, Luffy. Ma My safety engineer, what's up? Um, who do you think has a better rivalry? Natsu and Gray or Natsu and Gaggio? Yeah, Gray. Uh, Stallone and Schwarzenegger. <laughs> uh, Natsu and Gray. Because like he, because with Gaggio, there are times when they're, it's kind of like they respect each other, but Gray and Natsu never respect each other. When they should. Like, Gray's, Gray's all right. Not just super powerful. I haven't seen Gray do much of any, you know, anything beyond his scope of powers. I haven't really seen him do much. Um, I've, I've been freaking turned into a thousand little mini me's and, and taken on and guild arts and stuff. But uh, but yeah, so not just not just a lot of fun to do. I love recording on fairy tale. My throat doesn't. Um, but it's so cool to. It's kind of like we and we've only been recording that show like three years. Like imagine. Uh, you know, Miley Flanagan recording on Naruto for 14 years. Regularly. Not like we record a little bit, take a break. Record a little bit, take a I Like, consistently 14 years recording on Naruto. And then Johnny with Ichigo recording on Bleach for 9 years, 9 or 10 years. That's, inc that's amazing. Like, at least with Dragon Ball. With Goku, they record a chunk, then they don't. You know, then they record a lot, then they don't. And so, but even Sean Schimmel's been doing Goku for like, you know, 14 years. In fact, let's see, let's, let me call, should we call Sean? Yeah. yeah. Woo! Do it. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm going to do that. Are you sure to tell them about the new Boo Saga coming out? Tell them about the what? The Boo Saga, they just started it in Japan. Oh, he knows. Yeah. He's Goku. Goku knows everything. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna call. Him. Here we go. I'm gonna put it on. He'll he'll hear us. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah. Sean Schimmel. Yeah. You're on a panel with me right now. Oh great! I'm glad I didn't tell you what I was going to tell you. Well, we're, we're, we're on a panel right now, and I was talking about you, and we were talking about how awesome Goku was and how many years you've been doing it, because we were talking about, like, you know, Naruto has been going on this long, Bleach has been going on this long, and, you know, Dragon Ball right. Z, and uh, they just wanted to call and give you some love. Oh, love! Yeah. Wow! Well, thank you for doing all that, man. Well, of course, we, uh, I love talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> for me. I'm starting to think you're gay for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that he's cheating on Vic. What? Wait, what's that? I said, wait, did, did you either have a romance for me or you're gay for me? One or the other. Oh. Well, I'll let your imagination decide that. <laughs> But uh, yes, yeah, so everybody, everybody's here, and they're they're. Um, what's strange is every single person is dressed as Goku. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. We're all dressed as Superman. So <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, man. Well, I'll let you get back what to. City, what city are you in? Detroit. Detroit. Oh, Robocop's hometown. Detroit yeah. Oh, yeah. City. Yeah. 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 Welcome to the D. Detroit Rock City. 
Oh, uh, they're, they're sad now. <laughs> Detroit Rock City is rock and roll. Detroit Rock City. I know. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, bye. It's hard to remember something. I went in, I, someone brought up Disgaea for me to sign. I forgot I was in that for a second. I didn't remember I was in Disgaea 3. Uh, I didn't remember that I was in uh, Sword Art Online. I forgot. I'm Oberon. I'm like the lead villain. I didn't even remember that until they, they brought it up. I was like, oh my god, you're right. Oh my god. That, I got so many hate tweets about that one. I'm like, I didn't animate it. What's your question, man? We've got to finish D. Gray Man first. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if you're going to finish Bleach either? Because I know after it stopped after Ichigo Bezos, it's probably like, I know his little sister takes over as well. Spoilers. Uh, yeah, major spoilers. Oh. No, yeah, we're, we're, we're finishing Bleach. Yeah. And then it's, then it's done, though. Yeah, the Anna Yen's short. Ain't no spoilers, you know that. Ain't no spoilers, you know that. Yes. Last time when we saw you here at Yumicon, you talked about how Nick Cage is one of your favorite acting idols. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll tell you why. I'll explain that for you at the dinner. This is why Nick Cage is like one of my favorites because he just doesn't give a shit. Like he just, he is balls to the wall with his choices, and they are the oddest choice. It's courageous. Like when he makes some of these choices, you're like. Nick, that was horrible, but man, no one else would have thought of that. You know what I mean? It's like, like when he's, Face, have you guys seen Face Off? Yeah! You remember at the beginning when he's like the priest or whatever? That's like, who, who makes those kind of acting choices? Nick Cage does. Like when he's, when he's sitting there and he's like in the mirror and he's like, I'm not me, I'm me. Like and he's doing all that and it's like, who's, who are you? And then when he's a ghost, ghost writer, he's like, ah! Oh! Oh! <laughs> and then he like, turns into the ghost writer or whatever. Like, and, and then also, my favorite, now, someone that was, and I said this in my, my university class one time, um, one of my inspirations for, uh, for because I, have a, I come from an immigrant family, was Schwarzenegger. Because if you think about it, you know, he's kind of a, you know, he's been parodied so many times, but if you think about it, that man made his first million dollars when he was like 20. Like he, 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 he was in real estate when he was a kid, he got into real estate. He had a weight, uh, uh, weightlifting like 
protein powder business that he did. Like he began working out. He's like, I think I'll go be this little kid from a village in Austria. I think I'll go be Mr. Olympia. He did that like four times. Then he was Mr. Universe like seven times. And then he was like, I'm gonna go be a movie star in a foreign country and I don't even speak the language. He went over to America, became one of the biggest grossing movie stars of all time, married to Kennedy, became governor of California, regardless of what he did with it. He still achieved every goal he sets out. He nails it. I mean, he did it. And it's incredible to me watching, you know, that happen because if you think about it, Stallone has more, they did a, a chart comparison. Stallone has more franchises than, than Schwarzenegger, but Schwarzenegger pound for pound makes more money per movie. He's a bigger star than, than Stallone. It's always been that way. And it's, you know, even with the, uh, now with the Expendables series, I mean, that's a little different because, you know, Schwarzenegger went off and did government for a while. But, um, but yeah, Schwarzenegger was the man and they, they made fun of me in class and I'm like, you make fun, but, who in here has is has a net worth of four hundred million dollars? Because I don't. Schwarzenegger does. So it's it's one of those things where it's like you know what? I want to hate on him, but I don't think I can. So it's pretty impressive. Ash. Okay, out of curiosity, who do you think is better with magic, Natsu or Harry Potter? Oh, Natsu. Because really? if you think about it, look, Harry. Half the time, doesn't seem like he knows what spell he wants to use. You say one constantly. Thank you, Patronus. And then, uh, <laughs> and then also, he doesn't know that many spells. Now I know I've got some signature fire dragon things I do, but but I'm I'm trying new ways to get the fire. I'm I'm just trying to take your lightning over here, Loxus. I'm gonna eat some blue fire over here. I'm gonna try this over here. I'm gonna eat that. You know, all these different. I take on bigger, badder villains than Harry. Harry takes on what, Voldemort. Great. The guy has no nose. He, he can't get proper airflow circulation. How is he going to get proper fighting circulation? And, uh, you know, Natsu's been to hell and back. I mean, remember that time he, got, he was put into that void by the girl who eats the little hot dog lollipops or whatever? And then, he, like, some little, like, flute lollipops. She's the one that plays the organ and she, she runs that big mechanical dragon or whatever. After a while, we've done 145 episodes. I don't remember all of them. I remember images. <laughs> What's your question? Yes, sugar cookie. We talked about cookies. <laughs> she talked about snickerdoodles and fudge I've never heard of. <laughs> I didn't see any there. They're more common in the northern coast. I was kind of down in the middle and southern stuff like that. Um, but but I watched this show one time <laughs> called like the ten deadliest like creatures in the world. Like seven of them are in Australia, <laughs> and they're all in the same places. That's the east side of Australia. <laughs> but I do kind of want to see one because it's like I. Uh, Did, we, did you just say they're in car doors? Yeah, like, yeah, like you'll open your door. You're trying to open it, like, I can't pull, and it's a spider, like, <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. you don't know, like, if you're driving, and then, like, you see, like, a bug inside your car in the window, they do that, but they're, like, this big. It's what? <laughs> How do they get in the, through the exhaust pipe or something? <laughs> it's terrible. Magic. I don't know. Stand up on that on Australia. I think you listen to it on YouTube, just, like, people just, oh, my God. There's a huge video of a snake that comes like through where the windshield wipers are. And these guys are driving and it's like four full on snakes just comes like right on out. Snakes sound cool, but until they start using the